Bitcoin, a new creation that is going to change our everyday finance and the way how we use our money. It was created by an anonymous person or a group of people working under cryptonym of Satoshi Nakamoto. Every day we hear in the media how good they are and how many possibilities cryptocurrencies can create. However, what about the negative sides? Bitcoin has already been once classified as a speculative bubble. Yet, a new frenzy in 2021 is occurring. Recently, Elon Musk made a huge bet by buying almost one and a half billion dollars worth of Bitcoin and reported that his company, Tesla, is going to accept payments made by cryptocurrencies. It is, of course, set to increase the demand for a currently speculative market to become a real one. But there are some fundamental problems that will cause that Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies will fail one day. First of all, I need you to ask you a question. If you were ever able to actually buy anything with Bitcoin, I guess most of you have never even heard of places where you can buy things using it. And if you did, then you of course heard about the previously mentioned Tesla, probably Domino's Pizza, and of course, Darknet. Most of the illegal internet sites operating in the Darknet, which sell drugs, guns, and child pornography, operate by Bitcoin payments. And it is done because of its anonymity. This anonymity, that is supposed to be the biggest advantage of Bitcoin over other tradable goods, is actually helping organized crime groups, terrorists, and countries willing to evade international sanctions as to transfer their money from one place to another without extensive money laundering. While many people like comparing Bitcoin to gold, when it comes to illegal trade, there are some fundamental differences. First of all, our yellow shining resource is heavy and hard to transport. And in order to finalize a transaction, you need to meet the recipient in person. Here, the advantage of Bitcoin being a pure line of ones and zeros comes to play. You can buy absolutely anything you need to commit a crime by just one click on your phone and no federal authority will be informed about your potential illegal transaction. Another problem with Bitcoin is its lack of cybersecurity. While you're making a transaction through a centralized institution, such as a bank, there are several procedures they need to follow, as well as regulations in order to reduce any risk of theft. But when it comes to Bitcoin, these regulations barely exist. Until, the 2008, uh, until 2018, more than 980,000 Bitcoins were stolen just from crypto exchanges. And for today's Bitcoin value, it is more than $50 billion. And while there were some attempts to regulate the crypto trade, most of them are still inefficient and leaky. Thus, the concerns still remain and further action is still needed. The most well-known country for banning crypto trade is China. It has completely banned initial coin offerings, as well as it only allows exchanges to facilitate trade, not to buy or sell any. Chinese financial institutions are also forbidden from any sort of trade regarding cryptocurrencies. Despite all these measures, crypto mining has not been addressed until recently. Oversimplifying it, a new Bitcoin is created every 10 minutes. And people with decryptive algorithms are trying to guess its serial number. While in 2015, only few people knew about cryptocurrencies, there was much less crypto mining centers that actually competed for getting one. But while the demand went up and up and up, more new crypto mining centers opened and your chance to being the chosen one got lower and lower. And that is why crypto mining centers have increased their computing power 
in order to become the chosen one, the one that will receive Bitcoin in the end. And this drives the energy consumption to insane levels. University of Cambridge Center for Alternative Finance calculates that solely Bitcoin energy consumption is around 130 terawatt hours. And this is equivalent to the consumption of developed nations such as Sweden, Norway, or the United Am Arab Emirates. And this is only Bitcoin, with exclusion of Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies. As most of the world energy still relies on heavily polluted fossil fuels, we can estimate that solely Bitcoin consumption is around 0.43 gigatons of carbon dioxide. And just so we can compare it, it is more than most the European nations produce and something close to Australian emissions. This is not a way to how to build a new and revolutionary currency for the 21st century, while we are already struggling to lower our emissions and save us from the climate disaster. But let's get back to China. Recently, there was a change in Chinese politics and now they're trying to favor, favor renewable energy sources. In the region of Inner Mongolia, no new crypto mining centers will be opened and the currently existing ones will have to be shut down as in order to cut down on the strategically unneeded power consumption in order to achieve sustainability. And the main question arising from it is, will it become a global trend or will the Chinese province be an exception? Another aspect that determines the strength of a currency is its stability. And Bitcoin lacks it. As we can see, there are some significant fluctuations in its course and no one can accurately predict its price in the next two months. Let me ask you a question. Would you be willing to accept a payment made by a friend who owes you $100 in an asset that could be worth $200 or $4 in the next two weeks? Probably. Most of you would answer no, as people tend to have risk-averse preferences and getting paid in such an asset would be extremely risky. There is no central bank standing behind it that could guarantee that the future exchange rate is going to be at least close to the one today. It is, so, it's, it, it is all set by people willing to buy and sell, which, as history shows us, can change drastically over time. Following this instability, Bitcoin lacks a crucial aspect needed for it to become an international currency, which is a popular argument made by Bitcoin enthusiasts. After all of you heard what I said, probably most of you wonder, why is the price so high then? And well, the truth is I only touch the negative aspect and barely touch the positives, which there sure are. No matter the less, remember that speculative bubbles have been occurring throughout the history starting from the famous Mississippi bubble that nearly overturned the French economy in the 18th century to some more recent ones, such as the dot-com bubble in the 90s and the housing bubble in the early 2000s. And currencies are no different. And the only question is, when will someone press the check button again? As for a commodity with no future, Bitcoin will fail one day and die naturally or by dying under the needed regulation.